We'll construct a subtraction table using our algorithm. In this top row here, the Minuit number is a number from 10 to 18. And what I wrote in red is the sum of the numbers in the menu n. 1 and 0 is 1, 1 and 1 is 2, 1 and 2 is 3, 1 and 3 is 4, then 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, that's the sum of the digits. And I wrote it in as a subscript in red. The subtrahend numbers, 1 to 9, the 9's complement of 1 is 8, 1 and 8 is 9, 2 and 7 is 9, 3 and 6 is 9, 4 and 5 is 9, 5 and 4, 6 and 3, 7 and 2, 8 and 1, and 9 and 0. And I wrote it as a subscript in red. If I want to subtract from 10 a 1, I would just add the subscripts, 1 and 8, and I get a 9. If I want to subtract 2 from 11, I would just add the subscripts. 2 and 7 is 9. I'll put a 9. 12 minus 3. 3 and 6 are 9. 18 minus 9. 9 and 0 is 9. So it looks like this whole diagonal is all 9's. 15 minus 6. 6 and 3 is 9. So it is. So all we have to do is add the subscripts and we can get the difference in here. The only place that 1 appears is this square right here. 10 minus 9. 1 and 0 is 1. 10 minus 8. 1 and 1 is 2. 11 minus 9 is 2 and 0 is 2. So this diagonal, both 2's. 10 subtract 7, 1 and 2 is 3, 11 subtract 8, 2 and 1 is 3, 12 subtract 9, 3 and 0 is 3. So this diagonal is a 3. This diagonal will come out to be a 4, this one a 5, this one a 6, one a seven, this one an eight, and then finally the nine. The only differences that we show is when the subtrahend digit two is greater than the corresponding minuend digit one. So there it is. I constructed a subtraction table in a few minutes. So a student in the first grade or can verify the facts in the subtraction table. They don't have to memorize it. Memorizing abstract facts that cannot be visualized is the most difficult rote memory there is. It's always better that the students verify the facts and then the repeated use of this algorithm, they will memorize them automatically. We will modify our algorithm slightly so that it applies to all numbers. I will subtract from 25, 7. 7 is greater than 5, so I have to borrow 1 from that 2. That becomes a 1, and this becomes 15. 7 from 15 is 8, 0 from 1 is 1. So 25 minus 7 is 18. I will do it using the 9's complement procedure now with the modification that we need 
in order to make it valid for all numbers. 25 minus 7 to this difference I'm going to add a 0. I'm going to add plus 99. The reason for two nines is because there's two numbers in the menu end. Then I'm going to subtract 99. Adding a zero to this difference will not change that difference. However, I'm going to, I don't want to subtract minus 99 because that's going to involve borrowings and carries. So I'm going to write 90, minus 99 in, in this form, minus 100 plus 1. If I add plus 1 to minus 100, I get minus 99. So this is another way of writing minus 99. And then when I come to subtract this, it's a very easy subtraction to subtract 1 from a number. From this 99, I'm going to subtract the subterhand 07. In the 9's complement procedure, if the menu end numbers, there are two here, are greater than the subterhand numbers, one here, I have to add a leading zero. We have to add as many leading zeros as we need in order to make the subterhand and the menu end equal in number of digits. Seven from nine is two, zero from nine is nine. So this number 92 is precisely the nines complement of that subtrahend 07. I'm going to add this menu end to it now, 25. 5 and 2 is 7. 9 and 2 is 11. So I have 117 when I'm doing subtraction by subtraction, the minuend number is reduced to, small, to a smaller number. When we do subtraction by addition, we are actually adding 92 to the minuend. So we're going to get a carry over to the 100th place, decimal place. It'll always be a 1, as we'll see. Then I'm going to subtract this minus 100. When I do that, I get 0 from 7 is 7, 0 from 1 is 1, minus 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, so I get 17. Then I'm going to add this 1, plus 1, and I get 18. I get the correct difference. So in the ninth complement procedure, I will take the ninth complement of 07, which is 92, put it over here and I'm going to add it to the menu end. When I do that, I get the same number, 117, same as here. Now this step here where I subtract 100 and I get 17, and then I add a 1 and I get 18 is the same as taking this leftmost digit which will always be a 1 and adding it to the rightmost digit 7 and you will get 18. So I'm going to skip these three steps. When you add the leftmost digit which will always be a 1 to the rightmost digit 7 in this case you will get the correct difference, 18. And it's mathematically correct to do that. All I'm doing when I do that is skip these three steps. There's no need to do it. So this is the final form of subtraction by addition that's valid for all numbers. We'll try it now on uh, several other problems to check its accuracy.